Welcome back to Malt Mondays, I'm Paul, and this week we're taking a look at the Balvenie A Week of Pete. I think it's got one accidentally drive up to Talisker. So what makes the week of Pete so special? Well, Valveni has to shut down their entire production for a whole week to produce uh, this whiskey. A peated malt can't be used interchangeably with other malts because the strong, smoky flavor of it, uh, it actually, it impacts anything that it comes into t contact with. So they're going to have to go through, stop production, cycle everything out, put in the peated malt, produce this distillate, and then probably clean and wash everything before they go through and continue their normal production. This adds cost, time, and it's no small effort at all. So it's actually pretty interesting to see a company at the scale of Balvenie go out of their way to do something like that for really what's just one release. So The Week of Pete is Balvenie's second entry in their story series. Now, they already were producing this before uh, The Week of Pete came out, and it was called Pete Week. So I think they decided to rebrand this whiskey from Peat Week, uh, which they have been producing from about 2014 or 15 up until 2018 into the Week of Peat, simply to make it fit into their new story series. Now the story series is essentially Balvenie's private collection or their experimental collection. Balvenie as we know it today doesn't traditionally use any peat. Uh, they really, they don't produce any smoky whiskeys. They're in the Speyside region. Uh, so the Speyside region is not known for producing smoky whiskeys. It's quite rare there, unlike the island regions where they produce almost entirely smoky whiskey. But that doesn't mean that Balveni doesn't have a history of producing smoky whiskey. David Stewart, the malt master, who is now the longest serving malt master in the scotch industry at over 50 years, uh, has said that this is kind of a callback to the 40s, 50s, and 60s when Balvenie did produce some peated spirit, uh, and then even earlier than that as well. In fact, I think he's called this the most traditional Balvenie that they make today. But all that extra effort doesn't come for free. This whiskey sits at $110, which for a 14-year-old whiskey is uh, it's getting up there in price. Now, it's not out of line with Balvenie's other pricing with their 15-year-old single barrel um, at $120, but that being said, it is a little more on the pricey side, and especially compared to the Balvenny 14-year-old Caribbean cask, which is only $65. This is almost twice as much, and so really a lot of what you're paying for there is that the logistics of swapping over production, the added cost, the added effort, and the somewhat unique character of this whiskey, at least in Balvenny's perspective. So let's go ahead and see how it tastes and see if it lives up to the price. So the first thing I want to point out is that when we look at the label here, uh, we don't get any information about natural coloring. This is a little bit unfortunate because some of Balvenie's whiskeys, like their single barrel series, are natural color, uh, which is very evident if you just go to a store, pick up a handful of bottles. If they come from a different cast number, you're going to notice that there's a substantial difference in color, uh, especially for the 15-year-old single barrel sherry cask. Uh, some of those are more first fill barrels, some are more second fill barrels, and unfortunately they don't say anything about that here, uh, but we do get non-chill filtered, and we do get 48.3% ABV, which is fantastic. Now, while bottling at a higher proof like this is by no means a prerequisite for a whiskey to be good, it's certainly closer to the natural representation of what that whiskey would be like, which would ideally be straight out of the cask. It does have a beautiful golden color, um, unfortunately, again, we don't know if that color is natural, but you know, for 14 years in f probably a mix of first and second fill ex bourbon barrels, I think this is a fair color, uh, maybe a touch dark, but that really depends on that proportion of those first fill barrels to second fill barrels. So it doesn't seem to be egregious, uh, use of coloring here, but obviously we would love to see them use no artificial coloring at all on all their releases. So let's see how it smells. It 
right away, you know this is a peated whiskey. Now, Balveni is getting their peat from the northeast side of uh, the Speyside region. And this is very different peat from what you're getting on Isla or the other islands like Talisker or Skye, where, where those island distilleries, those coastal distilleries, are pulling peat from the region where their distillery is, from right there on the coast. And that peat's going to have more of a maritime character. It's going to have more briny, iodine notes. This peat, however, is coming from the highlands and the Speyside region, which is much more temperate, um, not as coastal. And so what you get here is you do get that funkiness of the peat. You get the earthiness. But it's a little more towards like a wood smoke uh, than, than like a really medicinal, really um, sea, ocean kind of flavor. You don't get any of those seaweed kind of aromas. And this is actually a pretty malty uh, whiskey. So this Balvenie is, it's quite malty. There's a little bit of that honey, again, coming through the characteristic Balvenie honey. Definitely some citrus. It's a little indistinct though. You know, I think the peat here, and they are peating at 30 ppm, which is really quite high. Um, for perspective, Laphroaig, which is one of the most heavily peated uh, whiskeys, is somewhere around 40 to 50 ppm. It definitely puts it in a highly peated category, I would say. That space side peat is a little gentler than the Isla peat, but it still seems to be maybe a touch too much uh, for Balvenie, which is a rather light and sweet distillery character to their to their distillate. It's just it just makes the aroma a little bit muddled. So that being said, let's see how it tastes. Hmm. The taste is fantastic. Um, you get those barley character, that barley character coming back. You get some orchard fruits, a little bit of apple. Man, you get some burnt sugar, touch of milk chocolate. The peat starts to roll in on the back and, and you get this nice wood smoke, like wood chips. The finish, the peat starts to build a little more. The finish isn't super long. Um, at least the, the finish from the whiskey itself isn't super long from the base spirit. Um, the finish from the peat is quite long. And so if you're someone who likes a long finish in their whiskey, uh, and if you haven't tried peated whiskeys, they definitely, they give you that. It's kind of cheating because that smoke is lingering. It kind of coats and sticks to your mouth. But a lot of what's doing it here is that higher proof. This whiskey is extremely rich in your mouth. It's not hot at all. It's a little bit spicy. There's a, there's a hint of, of warmth in there. But it's, there's no harshness here, uh, despite the higher proof. I think this is perfect at the ABV that it's presented at. Again, the flavor, really, really excellent. On the aroma, where that peat just starts to drown out Balvenie's character a little bit. I do think you get that a little bit on the finish, too. Where normally with Balvenie, you get this nice, sweet, honeyed kind of finish. I think the peat gives you a little bit of that bitter earthiness and that mix with that kind of honey character I don't know it's almost like a little it doesn't quite fit right so you know overall I think at $110 I think it's pushing it the problem is all scotch prices are going up they've been going up for a while so at this point $110 for a 14 year old whiskey is not unheard of you know, a lot of 10 year old whiskeys are starting to push into the 60 and $70 price point. Um, and you're seeing 12 year olds up at $85 if you're McAllen. I think when you take into account the higher ABV, the non chill filtration, the fact that this is a whiskey that logistically costs Balvenie much more to make than a standard bottle of 12 year old or 14 year old whiskey, I don't think 110 is totally unjustified. 
I just don't know that this is where I would necessarily go with $110 for a pita whiskey. There's a lot of pita whiskeys you can get with $110. You can get two bottles of the Port Charlotte 10, two bottles of the Ardbeg 10. Those are both fantastic whiskeys. And if you're looking for that PD character, I just, I don't really know why you would go here instead of to Isla. Other than if you're really kind of a whiskey nerd and you want to try and experience the nuances of the different types of peat, because this is using peat from a different location in Scotland, or if you're a big Balvenie fan and you want to see what Balvenie's offering tastes like with peat, how those two characters work together, I think this is for you. Um, I just, if you're looking purely for, I've got $110, I want to go for a peated whiskey, I don't think this is where I would push you. I think I would tell you, go to Isla. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and let me know down in the comments below what you think of the Balveni Week of Pete. Uh, did you enjoy it? Did you not? Uh, did you think it was worth the money? And if you want to support the show, head over to patreon.com slash maltmondays. Uh, we've got a few different tiers set up, including a virtual tasting tier that still has a few spots left. And you can get merch like tasting coins, t-shirts, etc. And don't forget to go check out the Whiskey Uncut podcast that I produce with my friend James. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's more of just a talk show about whiskey, um, but we get guests from the industry on from different distilleries, as well as just kind of have fun with it. It's not quite as structured as uh, this review segment is. So until next time, guys, remember, drink more whiskey, share it with your friends, and cheers.